catch-up plan for schools is being announced by the government. 100 million extra hours of tuition to help people get back on track after months of disruption from the pandemic. Uh, but the plans have already come under fire with experts saying it's not enough uh, and the £1.4 billion of funding announced is only a tenth of what is actually needed to repair the damage done by COVID to uh, the education of our children. Now, joining us, as you can see from Westminster, is the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson. A very good morning to you. Um, are morning. you cross with Rishi Sunak this morning? I'm incredibly grateful that we're in a position to, outside of a spending review, outside of a budget, we're able to take action to help children right across the board. And a key element of that is tutoring. Uh, we've already seen, we've announced uh, £1.7 billion worth of additional money to help schools, but most importantly, to help children over the last few months. Um, this is complementing it, but it's turbocharging what we're doing in terms of uh, tutoring. And it means so that up to language, six That's just language, isn't it? You've talked in the paper that it's radical turbocharging. I mean, for you to say that you are grateful for what is a what many have said, even Andrew uh, Pierce from the Daily Mail, who you know we know that they're pro Tory many times. Peanuts, he described it. The unions are saying so never so much been promised, so little delivered. It's paltry for you to say that you are grateful for that small amount, a drop in the ocean of what your own advisor suggested, fifteen billion pounds. You get one point four or one point seven, whatever it is. It is so small. It don't you feel embarrassed that you? are coming on national television today, you're grateful for that very small amount. Shouldn't you be fighting for the schools and saying, actually, I'm quite cross about this because I wanted more? So what we've identified is sort of two key areas that we recognise that we can drive real change. And we've been rolling out the National Tutoring Programme over the last few months. And we're seeing the real impact in terms of actually how it's helping children catch up, especially from some of the children from the most disadvantaged backgrounds. What we're doing is we're massively expanding that. We're taking it up to six million pupils right across the country, creating an extra 100 million hours of uh, tutoring time for children. It's a enormous expansion, especially when it comes I'm out sorry of... sorry to interrupt, but it only covers 75% of the cost anyway. That amount um, doesn't actually... The schools are still going to have to cough up 25% and as time goes on, they're going to have to end up paying for it all. So what you're saying, actually, is that the spin just doesn't... It just doesn't stand up. And you know that this morning, don't you? You've seen all the criticism. Mary Bowstead, rarely, as I've said, rarely has so much been promised, so little delivered. She's from the uh, uh, NEU. The National Association of Head Teachers, poultry. Others saying after weeks of big talking, big uh, building expectations, uh, it just confirms that the government's lack of ambition for education. You have a lack of ambition for education as the education secretary. That's the accusation. So we certainly this don't have a lack of ambition for education. We've been seeing actually how these interventions are really helping children, whether it is, uh, you know, for so long. People who've had the money have recognised that actually by investing in tutoring, it helps their children. But we don't want that to be the preserve of a few. We want to sort of see something that is able to help children right across our whole school system. That's why we've done this. But in terms of actually the next steps, and as we look forward to the spending review, we're starting this extra work and this review in terms of the amount of time that actually children should be spending in schools. And one of the questions that we do have to ask is, is it right that actually children are in a situation where maybe they're going out of a school gate at 2.45 in the afternoon. Uh, lunch hours have been squeezed down okay, to a lunch look, half hour. So the type of enrichment Gavin, activity... Gavin, not, Gavin, sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. Well, well I, I'm sorry, but we're out of time. We're going to be out of time very soon, so I do need to speak over you because we're not getting an answer to the most important question. You keep on telling us what the plans are, but you haven't got the money to do it. It's really simple. You appointed Sir Kevin Con You appointed him yourself to give a review of what was required. He came back and said, you need £15 billion to sort this out. You promised you were going to level up the country. You have come back with a tenth of it. You haven't got enough money. People close to Kevin Collins himself have said he is deeply frustrated. The sense is that the Treasury is completely in denial about all of this. I'm sorry, you cannot come in here and say you've got massive expansion plans when everybody else but you is saying you haven't got the money to do it. Are we going to see £15 billion? And if so, when? And why haven't we got it now? You promised you were levelling up this country. We don't see it. 
Well, what we've seen is a commitment of over £3 billion over the last few months in terms of actually having direct action. When are we going to see the £15 that... billion, Gavin Williamson? That's the question. When are we going to see 15 Not £1 billion, not £3 billion, not £1.4 billion, £15 billion. When are we going to see that? That is the recommendation by the, by the person you appointed to review. And that is... That is experts who are saying that, the unions are saying, when are we going to see £15 billion? So what we're seeing is there's a number of interventions, whether that's tutoring, whether that's teacher quality, it's been quite clear these have the so biggest we're not impact going to see in terms 15 of children. Billion, we're not going to see £15 billion. Why don't you just say that, that you haven't got the money and we will make it work with £1.4 billion? Why don't you just say that? So we're not going to... You can't tell us we're going to get £15 billion and we're not going to level it up. You can't tell us that, can you? Well, you'll know, uh, because you've studied politics, is actually these things are usually done through a spending review process. And actually what we've done is we've stepped outside of that spending review. So usually that happens much later on in the year. But we wanted to take action so children could benefit, so children are actually able to start benefiting from tutoring at the very earliest stage. Now, we're seeing up to a quarter of a million pupils already benefiting from that, from the earlier action we've taken. But we wanted more to benefit. So as we work up towards the spending review, you, as we take up the sort of challenge about making the arguments about what the school day should look like. And, you know, there's many of those people that you've quoted uh, were actually sort of decrying the idea that we should have so, a, okay, so a when, longer when, school when do, day. When do students... So what we're doing is we're taking the time to do everything we can do for actions that are going to deliver best for children. Okay. Right, Tutoring but... is one of those actions. Oh. Tutoring delivers for... Sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you, but tutoring delivers. And when you go to schools, as you do, I do so often, and you speak to children, you speak to their parents and you speak to teachers, they're seeing the real difference. Okay. We're sort of, as I say, we're turbocharging this tutoring programme. It's going to deliver so much. It's going to I have love, an immediate I'll, impact I will talk on over so many I know, children. I know we're running out. I love the term turbocharging. It sounds fantastic. But when, when will we get the spending review? Because there are people at home right now worried, thinking, oh, you know, we've got A-levels next year, we've missed out on school... When will this spending review happen? Which spending review are we talking about? When will it happen? And when will we get the extra £14 billion on top of the paltry £1.4 billion that you've promised so far? When will that spending review happen, please, Mr Williamson? Well, as you know, the spending review will be announced by the Treasury and is expected to be later on this year. OK. Um, now, what about the 21st of June? What's, what's happening there? Are we, are we heading towards that? Is that going to be the, as everyone is calling it, Freedom Day? Uh, is, is that the plan at the moment? Well, that's very much the hope. Uh, we're obviously de driven by not dates, but the data that we get. It's right that we examine that very carefully, especially in light of uh, the new Indian Delta variant that has has emerged. But what we're also seeing from the, the data is that the fact that the British people have gone out there, got themselves vaccinated, it is having an impact in stopping the spread of a virus. And I'd urge all your viewers to go out there if they're entitled to get that jab, get the jab, make sure they get the second jab, because by doing that, they're helping to keep not just themselves safe, but uh, their families, friends and community safe as well. But uh, we've got got to look at the data, but um, the measures that we've taken, the, the leadership that the Prime Minister has shown, has put us in a position where we are in a far better place than so many other nations with so much of our population having received that vaccine. And is it uh, part of the policy, do you think, for children to have the vaccine? A lot of parents at the moment will be wondering whether their children will be asked to have the vaccine. What's your take on that? And would you, have, would you, would you be encouraging your children to take the vaccine at some point in the future? So... I think you raise a, a really important and a very sensitive issue and we're, we're still awaiting some of the work by the JCVI, which is the, the body of expert clinicians and scientists as to the, the best way of approaching that. And it would be wrong to uh, make a judgment before we've seen that information. But it's, it's right that we have a debate, but that debate must be based on the best scientific and medical in, uh, sort of... A, information that we can sort of be provided with and we'll, we'll await that before a decision is made. OK. Uh, Gavin Williamson, you've got to go now, so uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me.